I'm Timothy David Ray from the Play Heart Play Writing Cohort. I use his, he pronouns, and I'm a light-skinned black man with a bald head wearing wire rim aviator glasses, a navy blue shirt with white diamond pattern, and a white apartment background behind me. Now I'd like to introduce my co-reader, co Karen Skybel, who described herself. Hello, I'm Karen Skybel. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a white woman wearing a light brown reddish wig, a pink turtleneck, and a white background. I'll be reading from the play I've been workshopping at Lambda called Zip, and here's an introduction. It's 1981, and as Mercury zips around the sun, then a black gay astrophysicist with an increasingly unstable mind is conducting his final phase of groundbreaking research, but is interrupted by a stargazing Nancy Reagan and her gay confidant Jerry Zipkin in a Washington DC park. In this excerpt, the day after the astrological event, Nancy arrives unannounced at the astrophysicist university office looking for answers to what she believes is a life-threatening omen. I'll be reading the astrophysicist Vin. Nancy Reagan will be read by Karen Skybel. Thank you, audience. All my research, my conclusions, I'll have to start over, you understand. My equipment is gone, destroyed, struck by lightning or some electrical current. It'll take years to rebuild. Mm, yes, there was a little confusion yesterday in the park. Uh, a lot of confusion. Your silly uh, uh, astrological games ruined it all. Did you know no one reports seeing anything yesterday? No reports of meteors or asteroids in the area. No reports of sky sounds from NASA. No one saw or heard a thing over Washington, D.C. yesterday, except some thunder and storms. You're pretty calm for someone who just experienced an astrophysical phenomenon. Don't you think it would be a good idea what? to explore some possible explanations, just you and me? Explanations, an explanation. Oh, I don't have an explanation. Uh, no? Look, we were 20 miles from the city, secluded. It could have been a... Uh, Terrestrial or gravitational mirage, a mere image of something that shielded us from everybody else's view, a bubble. Think of us inside a snow globe. What you saw was like lightning. What anyone outside the globe would see would be nothing, just a clearing in the park, a distortion, see? A snow globe. Yes. Uh, effect. Yes. On a 60 degree day in spring during the warmest March on record in years. So you do admit there was something looked like lightning, you said. It's an analogy. See, looked like but probably was not. And me and Jerry flying through the air at the whim of this, uh, this lightning and yet not a bruise on me. Is, is that an analogy too? I mean, as, as for falling, well, positional vertigo, there you are. Yes, they're little crystals in your ear. They can get dislodged. Sensations of falling, it happens in, you know, older adults. Older, positional, like lightning, snow globes, migraines. I'm a very busy woman. Look, I can't tell you what you thought you saw. I'm... I'm just saying I didn't experience what you think I did. So you're telling me it was nothing. I'm telling you it's nothing you need to be concerned about. But that's not my conclusion at all. You asked for an explanation. And you concocted one. How many times has that sort of thing happened? Gravity mirage, proposition and vertigo. How many? I... Yeah, that's what I thought. Something happened out there that neither you nor I can explain. Don't you think you'd be better off just telling me? I am telling you. I don't think you are. I didn't get the message I thought I'd get, not for me. I, I mean, after the flashes and clicks, which I definitely heard. But I did feel something otherworldly. Just for a moment, would that be so, so? Yes, very. 
it was only us in the park and I just blacked out. Simple exhaustion. And if you're thinking about spouting off about this message about mediums and witches and warlocks. Warlocks! <laughs> Zell, they left me out of academia for good. Here, the direct number to me at the, you know, should anything useful come to mind? Jerry's out in the hallway, wants to talk to you alone uh, about the photograph of yours he destroyed yesterday. Such an unfortunate accident. Maybe even apologize. One can dream, I suppose. That's enough to triumph doubt. You can't control your dreams. Are oh, your nightmares, Dr. Robinson. The future doesn't belong to the faint hearted. You should learn to listen to that voice inside you. I know you have one. I just wonder if it will ever truly find its way out without destroying you first. There's a new world out there just waiting. Don't you see it? A new world, sure. But for who? Jerry! Thanks for listening. <laughs>